Hi there folks, Ben Beadle, Chief Executive of the NRLA here, hope you're well. I'm joined by the absolutely delectable Vanessa Warwick of Property Tribes and we've both been partaking in a panel on uh, the private rented sector uh, this morning. Some really, really interesting debate and the PRS has actually been quite a constant theme uh, in the housing discussions that I've been at. But uh, Vanessa, how did you think that, how did you think that went? Well, first of all, I think it's just such an experience to be here, isn't it? There's there's a real buzz. Um, our little panel was early this morning at quarter to nine. Um, it was interesting. Uh, it was well represented, I think. There was uh, you and myself representing landlords. We had generation rent um, represented tenants. We yep. had uh, local authority represented with a local authority councillor. Yep. And we had a conservative MP, James Cartledge. And I think what came out of it for me was that everybody was pretty much singing from the same hymn sheet that we need to deal with the the, the rogue element of the private rented sector and um, you know be more positive about uh, good landlords and the service they provide. That was certainly the thrust of what I was saying. I really spoke out against the anti-landlord rhetoric in the mainstream media and also obviously from the likes of Shelter and Generation Rent. But you know I think James Carthage, the MP, really surprised us, didn't he? Yeah, I think it's fair to say we butted heads. And for those you of did. you that, um, <laughs> uh, that don't know this chap, he was uh, PPS for Rishi Sunak, but also um, uh, tries to take the credit for recommending the idea of mortgage interest relief uh, abolition, Section 24, um, uh, as presenting that to George Osborne at the time, who, as we know, uh, adopted that and we were making the point, weren't we, that we see 260,000 fewer homes in the private rental sector, we see rent uh, rising at a significant rate, we see a lack of confidence in the market, but he was really pleased about that. He thought that was a bloody good thing, didn't he? Well, Ben, he was quite dominant on the panel, I think, and I, I, I really think you did a good job at, at, at challenging him because he, he kind of did try to take over a little bit. Um, he, he had some he actually said some things that weren't correct. He said that um, the rental coverage on a buy-to-let mortgage is 125%, uh, it's actually 145%. But he was um, very, uh, he was going on about how buy-to-let mortgages were too easy to get um, and had been over the last uh, 10 years or so and it's contributed to the credit crunch, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, uh, you know, I was surprised at his stance. He was not uh, at all pro pro-landlord in, in my opinion. He was not pro-our sector, was no, he? No, uh, In any way, shape or form. And I think it was really interesting for me, and this is a theme that's come out of the various things that I've been at, which is this government is, wants to turn generation rent into generation buy. They want a nation of homeowners, but they have absolutely no idea of how to achieve that. Um, and the point that we were making was that you need a vibrant private rented sector, you need more social homes, but you need it now. And the, this idea of opening up brownfield sites and relaxing planning and uh, build to red homes is too little, too late, and not quick enough. Um, and that will be, uh, in my view, the reason these guys get voted out at the next election. And that's what I told him. You did, you did tell him. And as you said, Rome is burning, and all these kind of headline ideas where there's no detail. Well, they're great, but they might take 10, 15 years to, to implement. Right now, Rome is burning. Uh, we've got a, a massive supply and demand imbalance, which we all talked about, and everybody admitted there was. It's only going to get worse now with um, you know, interest rates rising. It's going to put first-time buyers off uh, buying more people going into the private sector at the exact moment that more landlords are going to leave because of everything that's going on. But I think both of us spoke out against Section 24, didn't we? And I think that was the feedback that I had from Property Tribes members. They wanted us to speak out against Section 24. But a bit of breaking news, um, one of the things that uh, Carthage said was that he had also advocated that buy-to-let mortgages were repayment and not interest only. Now, just imagine if he had, you know, if that had come in as well. That, that would have been the end of the private rental sector. It, it, it would have been, and I think it just sort of shows you how far away these guys and girls are from the realities of, of the sector. You know, I was making the point that this is not the Wild West. You know, we have 170 pieces of regulation, but some of the solutions around this are further regulation and regulating in a way that will not help our sector. It won't help uh, landlords, and it certainly won't help tenants. So 
a little bit of a depressing uh, uh, setting, <laughs> but we'll uh, we'll go and have a coffee and we will uh, talk about it on the Landlord Lens in a few weeks' time. We will. I think it's so good, Ben, that you were here, that you were a voice for landlords and that you did challenge um, Stephen Cartledge. I, I, I commend you for that. And, um, you know, I think it's good that the NRLA are participating in these events. I don't know how I ended up here, <laughs> but uh, you, were, you were a great spokesman today, Ben. So on behalf of landlords, I'm going to thank you. Bless you. We fight the fight. See you soon, folks.